it's Dr. Chris with Texas Chiro Health uh, coming back with our 12 minutes to health as we do every week. So just wanted to take a quick second and say thank you for joining us. Um, you know, this is, like I say each and every week, this is our favorite thing that we do in the office. And I think it's one of the most important things that we do in the office too, is to help educate everybody, all of our patients, their families, our communities on what it takes to truly be healthy according to the research, the real research that's out there in the peer-reviewed medical journals so that we're able to deliver to you a scientific approach on how to be healthy and how to live your best lifestyle. So, you know, I really do appreciate you guys joining us each week and that's why I started out by saying thank you each and every time because I really mean it. I really mean thank you for joining us and, and taking a proactive approach to your health and how to get healthy. Um, you know, we do this every single Tuesday in our office at 515. I encourage everybody to get into the office because it makes a big difference to be there in front of the doctors to see what's going on in the clinic, uh, to actually grab and hold the research and be able to read through it and take it home yourself um, and to get your questions answered. The doctors are there for you and I know that in 12 minutes there's a lot of questions that pop up. So uh, get into the office Tuesday nights 515. We have healthy snacks refreshments, green smoothies, all kinds of stuff for you guys. Um, but like I said, most important thing is you can get your questions answered and meet the doctors. So come on in. And if you ever want to do this where you work or something like that, we also get out into the community all the time. We'll bring you a good healthy lunch and just do a little 15 minute presentation, you know, to where we can give you the 12 minutes to health but also get your questions answered for you, your coworkers, and your friends and family. So take advantage of that stuff, get a hold of us, let us know if that's something you'd like to do. But most importantly, let's dig into the research. What we're looking at here, this article is done by Esh et al. And it deals with stress and cardiovascular disease, right? I don't think it's a secret that stress is hard on our body, that it affects our health, that it affects our cardiovascular system, um, our immune system, it affects everything. Stress is a big deal. It's why we're always talking about, you know, yes, you need to eat the right stuff and you need to exercise, but we also have to be able to manage our stress. And that's what this article looks at. It looks at cardiovascular disease in particular. It touches on the immune system at the end just a bit, which we'll talk about, but it's looking at stress, isolated, just stress, and how that affects your cardiovascular system. So, um, you know, I, like I said, it's no secret. We the, you, the common phrase all the time, right? You're gonna give yourself a heart attack, settle down, quit stressing out. We understand that stress is not good on the heart and the cardiovascular system, um, but, a lot of times we don't understand why or how that happens. One of the big things that we fall into is we blame a lot of it on genetics. We blame all of it on genetics, right? Well, my dad had heart disease and his dad had heart disease and I'm just bound to have heart disease. And I don't think that's necessarily the case. Um, and the research agrees with me. I'm not saying that there's no genetic component at all because I think there is, right? I think there is a genetic component to it. But what is bigger than that is what we call epigenetics, right? What kind of environment are we surrounding ourselves in? Do we eat like our dad who ate like his dad? Do we exercise like our dad? I mean, look at all of the habits that we form. Do we handle stress the same way? Do we sit the same way, walk the same way, talk the same way? That's all environmental. We learn those behaviors from our parents and their parents and their parents and their parents, right? And a lot of times we'll confuse that with genetics. And that becomes an issue because we feel like we lose control and we, we have no control over our own health. And that's just not the case. We do have control over our own health. Yes, there's a genetic component to it, but those genes don't have to be activated at certain levels if we take care of our bodies correctly. A lot of the stuff that we see, they didn't see back when we were, you know, our Paleolithic ancestors or um, as we were, um, you know, even a couple generations ago. You don't, you don't see as much of the disease because we, we moved more. We had less to stress about. We, had, we managed our stress better. Um, we were a, I guess, a tougher population as we were coming up, right? Things have gotten easier through technology and things like that, but it's also been detrimental to our health. So those are some of the things we're going to look at here tonight um, as we look at this article on stress and the cardiovascular disease. So the article started out talking about balance. Balance is the key in stress, and balance is the key in everything in life, right? 
through an extremely complicated equilibrium called homeostasis, which I talk about all the time, right? That's our body being at a level where we're healthy and our cells are functioning correctly and everything is moving along as it should. All living organisms maintain their survival in the face of internal and external stimuli. So basically what that means is stuff's going to happen. There's going to be stress. There's going to be stuff from the outside that we have to deal with. There's stuff going on inside that we have to deal with. We put the wrong food into our body. We create situations. We don't exercise enough. You know, all the stuff that I talk about creates rocks in our backpack. And this is the example that we use in the office created by Dr. James Chestnut. Um, and innate choice in the wellness practice, right? Well, it's a great example, and that's why we always use it with our patients because it's easy to understand. You have this guy here who's trying to stay afloat, and he's wearing a backpack, and the rocks in his backpack represent stressors in his life. Now, that could be, you know, eating a slice of pizza that causes a stressor. That's gonna, that adds a rock to the backpack, right? Side effects from medications, rock in the backpack. You have stressful events in life, chronic stressful events. Those are rocks in the backpack. And that's what this article is really looking at is the stress rock that's in your backpack. How heavy is it? And how much is it affecting us? How much is it pulling us down when it comes to cardiovascular disease? So the goal for us by doing these talks, by educating our patients, by looking into the research is to get these rocks out of our backpack so that we can stay afloat or stay at homeostasis. So that's, um, you know, homeostasis can be a confusing word. And that's why I like this example of rocks in the backpack so much, because it makes it very clear that if we remove rocks, we're floating better. It's easier for us to float and stay healthy and stay at homeostasis. And that's, again, what this article is looking at. When, one of the biggest things is looking at the type of stress and how that's affecting our body, right? Because some stresses can be good as... Um, as human beings, we are designed to survive, okay? And really all organisms are designed to survive. That's the main goal, survive and reproduce. For us to survive, it's easier now with technology and stuff, however, our health is declining. Um, but it used to be, you know, like this picture here, there's a lion. We go, we have to survive these situations. We were part of nature at that point. We're a little further removed from nature now, which is, you know, there's good and bad to it, just like everything else. But, but when we were very much a part of nature, we had what is called the flight or fight response. So we had to run or we had to fight, but either way we had to survive. And that causes huge amounts of stress hormones. It causes, you know, our pupils to dilate, all the blood to leave our digestive system and get to the skeletal muscles so we can either run or fight. Um, our arteries, they dilate as well, so blood can get going through there. But the thing was, after this stressful event, things settled down. And it was peaceful. And we were able to relax. And those stress hormones went down, they went away and we didn't face the chronic stresses that we face now. Now it's like we're being chased by a lion constantly. We have, you know, work, family, relationships, um, you know, everything that we have to take care of. The list is endless and it's, it's difficult to even mention all of it, but there's a constant state of stress and anxiety, okay? And what this does is it keeps us in a fight or flight mode more than we should be. And then when we do get a little bit of relaxation, it's very tough on our arteries and our cardiovascular disease to recover as quickly as they need to to get back into that fight or flight situation. And that's why chronic stress like this is destroying our cardiovascular system and is related to all these diseases like hypertension, um, atherosclerosis, uh, myocardial infarcts, um, you know, coronary artery disease. You look at all these chronic diseases that we're facing, and a lot of them are linked directly to stress. Stress can be a good thing, especially when we look at endothelial stress, okay? So endothelial stress is just the stress that's placed on our arteries and the, the uh, endothelial layer of our arteries so that blood can pass through. Here you see an example of atherosclerosis where you get placking in the arteries, which narrows the space that the blood can get through. This isn't good for us. This is a result of chronic stress, um, along with some other stuff, but, but chronic stress in this article, they're showing how it creates this atherosclerosis. Okay, so um, if you look at the, the fight or flight example from earlier, where you have those high stress um, incidences that then go away and we have time to rest and relax. 
that can be a good thing for our arteries. It's just like our muscles. We stress them, we kind of break down that tissue and they rebuild. Well, the endothelium does that as well. We get that stretching of the arteries, a lot of blood's coming through. This is why exercise is great for us as well. You have high, in high intensity interval training where you really blow open those arteries and then you let everything come back down. That's building elasticity and strength in the arteries and it keeps blood flowing the way it should. The problem is when we're chronically stressed and those arteries are stretched out chronically like that, like they are for a lot of us today, they tear, they stretch open like that, they don't have time to recover from a period of rest because we're chronically in this stress state, right? So what they do is they throw scar tissue at it. And that's what builds up these plaque arteries, right? That's that scar tissue trying to heal those arteries so we don't bleed out. Okay, so that they don't just rip open. We're trying to strengthen those areas. It's an adaptation that is a survival mechanism, but it's causing us to enter atherosclerosis or, or coronary artery disease, where we get these tight spots where it's chronically happening, and that's causing blood flow to slow down. It's cre increasing blood pressure, and then we have these incidents of heart attack and things like that. So the endothelial stress can be a good thing in short spurts with recovery and as long as we're managing our stress right and that's why I'm constantly talking about having that uh, psychological fitness routine right where you you take some time to get out into nature to breathe to just take time to slow down and take some deep breaths relax read meditate you know pray do whatever it is that calms you and kind of clears your head so that your arteries can rest your stress levels the hormones can come down i mean stuff's gonna come up and that's okay it's how are we managing it? how are we dealing with it and our endothelium is is paying the price and that's one of the things that this research piece showed is that because we are chronically stressed out we are seeing much much higher incidences of coronary artery disease and ischemic attacks at the end of the day so the ischemic response is exactly that you have these weak points right when i talk about an ischemic response it's essentially a heart attack when you have this chronic stress and that endothelium starts to build up that scar tissue you get certain areas that are really narrow well, those areas that are really narrow, when they contract, it can cut off blood flow. So if you have an event that causes a quick contraction, that cuts off blood flow. And you need more oxygen to the heart as it works harder. So you need that blood to get there to the muscle. And what we're doing is cutting it off. And it's only temporary, right? But it, but it cuts it off enough to where the heart freaks out. And that's the ischemic response. And that's why we're seeing a higher level of, of heart attacks and things like that because of this ischemic response due to the endothelial damage that is coming from chronic stress. So I cannot stress to you enough, not to be punny, but I can't stress to you enough how important it is that we make time, that we schedule time with ourselves so that we can lower our stress levels, thereby saving our endothelium and lowering the risk of coronary artery disease, which leads to an ischemic response like this. So very, very important that we create some kind of routine to just relax. And it can't be a vacation once every five years. That's not gonna do it for us. While they help, while being on vacation helps, it's just, we've got to do more than that. It's gotta be a daily thing. And if you can go on vacation daily, then I, I suggest you do it, but most of us can't, right? So we need to, to schedule time with ourselves and have some sort of routine that we use to relax, lower the stress hormones, and just breathe, okay? So um, reading, writing, meditating, all the things that I've talked about are very beneficial in doing this. So start to develop your own routine. If you need help with that, we are here for you. It's what we do with all of our patients. So in summary, stress plays a significant role in susceptibility, progress, and outcome of cardiovascular disease. I don't think that that's a surprise to anyone. It's just the mechanisms of how, which we've been discussing. So in particular, stress may cause or exacerbate disease processes depending on the type of stressor involved and or the duration of its in influence on an organism. So basically stress is causing cardiovascular disease to be worse because we are constantly stressed out. You know, it talks about the type of stressor. If we're in a situation where we need to go into fight or flight and we have a ton of those areas where atherosclerosis is built up, 
and boom, all of a sudden we get in a fight or flight situation, like, like we're facing the lion again or whatever it may be, the equivalent today, you can develop that ischemic response because it's going to cut the blood flow and it's going to restrict that high period of stress right there. So very, very important that we start to take care of ourselves and start to develop those daily routines. Like I told you earlier, they touch on the immune system just a little bit here at the end. And they say stress plays a significant role in susceptibility, progress, and outcome of immunological diseases. What that means is our immune system cannot function properly when we're chronically stressed out. Okay. One example I use with a lot of patients is um, as I was coming through chiropractic school, we had to take different parts of, um, you know, national board exams to become board certified. And there's four different parts to it and a physical therapy part that we all have to take. And as you're taking these things, you're, you know, there's late nights, there's lots of studying, there's not the best food, uh, you know, all the stuff that adds up. But our stress levels are very high. Our license depends on it. Our future depends on it. So there's a lot going into it. Well, it never failed that after one of those big exams, I would be sick. I would catch a cold. I would have a cough for a while. I would, you know, be more and more susceptible because I was so stressed. My immune system stood no chance at functioning. So just a little side note here at the end, you know, that it is very important to your overall health and your immune system and your um, cap the capabilities of your immune system to defend your body that you develop this routine that I'm talking about to lower your stress levels. There's ways to get, I could have gotten through those board exams and not gotten sick had I just taken the time to de-stress each day and, and built my routine. I just didn't know what I didn't know at that point. Um, and at that time, I actually thought it was coincidence until I got later in school and I'm like, man, this is the stress that's causing me to get sick after these exams. And still at that time, I didn't think there was anything I could do about it because I didn't understand the importance of that daily stress reduction routine. So very important that you guys get on that. And like I said, we're here to help. I know that stress is not the easiest thing to always deal with. And a lot of times we think we have no control over it. And a lot of times we're right. We don't have control over the stresses that come into our life. But what we absolutely have control over is what we're doing to manage those stresses. What kind of time are we taking for ourselves? When are we shutting the laptop? When are we putting down the phone? And when are we just taking a moment to breathe, relax, read, write, pray, meditate, all the things that we talk about. But, um, you know, again, I know there's lots of questions. I know that there's people dealing with stress, coronary artery disease, pain, right? Stress is involved in pain and lack of motion. And, and guys, that's what we do. And that's why we do this special offer for you guys. So I want you to, you know, get into the office, get your questions answered. It's a $39 donation from you guys to our local monthly charity. And this goes for any of you, any of your friends, family members, whoever you talk to. We donate that $39 to a charity. We cover your x-rays, the spinal health assessment, which is the proprietary health software that we use in order to get you a health score from one to 100 based on your lifestyle and the issues that are going on right now. Um, and that allows us, along with the exam, x-rays and consultation, to put together a plan to help you guys out. And we've knocked this all the way down to that $39 donation because we, we want the excuses to be gone. You guys need to, we gotta start taking care of ourselves, all right? And for just $39, we can at least figure out what to do, how to go about doing that, and, uh, and the benefits that that can have for you. So give us a call, get into the office, join us on Tuesday nights at 5.15. Um, and as always, guys, I appreciate you watching the 12 Minutes to Health. Thanks.